the big question that everybody has been asking in my inbox is, can I open your InDesign templates using Affinity Publisher? Now, Affinity Publisher, if you're not sure, I'm gonna take a step back and show you what that is. I'm gonna answer the question, yes or no, can you open my InDesign templates? And we'll also talk about which one is better. So I'm gonna flip the screen so you can see it. And I honestly just, this is a super impromptu video because I have so many questions in my inbox. Hopefully this will answer it because I keep copy and pasting the same answer. And then I could just direct people to this video, which hopefully will tell you which direction you should go in. All right, the first big thing you're going to notice when you go over to Affinity is they have three software products. So Designer is their equivalent of Adobe Photoshop. Photo is their equivalent of Adobe Lightroom and Publisher is their version of Adobe InDesign. So this happens to be a Black Friday sale. So just ignore this um, unless you happen to be watching it today. But otherwise it is $54.99 for Adobe Publisher and that is a one-time fee and supposedly upgrades, at, like if they make any upgrades in the future are free, you don't have to pay for any more. Don't get excited about the iPad apps. This is the uh, Photoshop and the Lightroom version. There is no, InDesign uh, iPad version, even with in Adobe. I just don't think it's possible with the way the layouts work. I think it would just be too hard. Um, but if you go over to pricing for this, this is not a one-time fee. This is a monthly recurring fee. So again, uh, this is $52.99 if you want all of the apps in Creative Cloud. Uh, again, ignoring the Black Friday deal because I think it's going to go away soon. And then this is the regular price for Adobe InDesign. It's $29.99. So if you go, let's not go to buy now. Let's go to um, see plan and pricing details because they do have a little bit of a variation. I believe this is a dollar less if I'm doing the math correctly. Um, 239.88 divided by 12. Yeah, so you only pay $19.99 per month if you do the annual prepaid and you do it all at once versus you just pay a dollar more extra per month if you want to pay monthly. And then this, I guess, has no contract, so they won't keep coming after you after the month and they'll only charge you $31.40. Uh, 49, so like, what is that, a dollar, um, no, like I guess $11.49 more or 50 cents more than the other one. So this is a monthly fee. I, you know, the big question is, okay, two things I'm going to answer. The second question is, can you open your InDesign files with Affinity? Yes you can. However, so what I did is I purchased Affinity because they had the Black Friday deal. And honestly, I just didn't know. And I kept asking people, you cannot open. There are three different files or two different files that Adobe InDesign creates. One is the .indd. That is the latest and greatest. They have an older version, which is their .idml, which works for older versions of Adobe InDesign. Now, I always include the .idml because inevitably somebody has a super old version. However, it's a good thing because if you go to open with, you can open this in Adobe InDesign or you can open this in Affinity Publisher. If you go over here to the .indd, you cannot see that option. You only see INDD. And if I go to the App Store and, well, I don't know why I did that. If I go to uh, other, that's what I meant, not App Store, it's my fault, uh, and I try to select Affinity Publisher, it is grayed out because that is not possible with the new version. So if I open this, let's go ahead and open this with Affinity Publisher. And then at the same time, we will go ahead and open the new one with Adobe InDesign 2022. So let's just look at some of the differences. So this is, I know I have, two things open. So this is Affinity Publisher. And what I have open is uh, the Etsy Kickstarter 2022. It's like the most popular uh, product in the shop because it is a full, um, a 2022 dated planner. And it is, uh, it comes with all the social media you need to market it. So here's the biggest difference. So when I go here, I'm missing I'm missing actual words, right? So they're just gone. I don't know where they went. Um, if we go over to InDesign, let's skip that and let's go to view over print preview and let's go to pages. Let's look at the first page so we can see that. And there we go. Let me make this a little smaller. All right, so you can see it has like the background. Um, it's a, I'm gonna say it's like a sky with some like 
zigzaggy lines or cloudy lines in it. And it says the perfect planner and it has little dots. Now when we go, this is Adobe InDesign. You can see right here the application that we're in. And then when I go over to Affinity Publisher, uh, you, which I guess you can just tell by the icon that's over here, um, there's a lot of things missing. Um, let me, so, well, I guess there's not a lot. I lie. It just, the word is missing. I don't know why. Um, it looks like, there we go. It's just too big for some reason on Affinity. So, you know, uh, you have to go through each page and kind of fix it. So this is the calendar. So this is the annual at a glance. And let's just zoom in here. So if you're downloading my planners and you're trying to open them on Affinity, you are going to be upset because <laughs> these numbers are clearly wrong. Um, and here's why. It's the same thing as over here. The letters, for some reason, are not fitting inside the bounding box. So these are the correct numbers, but for some reason, it's done something weird with this table, and it's just kind of resized everything. So this is supposed to be 10, this is supposed to be 11, this is supposed to be 12. And for whatever reason, it has put it onto two lines. If I think if I use the type tool and I go over here and I just select all of this and I try to make it smaller, like maybe an eight. And yeah, let's make all of this over here an eight. All right, so now it's kind of fixed it, right? So January, it doesn't look so bad right now, right? Uh, so that's what you're going to have to do uh, for everything. So does it work? Technically, yes, it does work. Uh, but you're going to have to try to figure it out. You're gonna have to do some troubleshooting too, because if I open this and I didn't know really anything, I'd just be like, oh my God, the whole file is just ruined. But it's really just a spacing issue. Um, let's go ahead and if I open up InDesign, obviously, because this is the application it was created in, all of the dates are perfect. <laughs> so they just kind of work like you would expect. Uh, if we go over to a monthly layout. So this monthly layout, actually this monthly layout in Affinity does not look too bad. It looks okay. Uh, the other thing too is down here, this is, I believe that's on the master pages inside of Adobe InDesign. Let's go over here and double check. Yeah, that's on a master page. And so if I go to a master page inside of here, oh, Sorry, it's off screen. Uh, so over here, if I double click, this is on the master page. But with the uh, Affinity program, it is just going to stick it on there as a new thing. So if you want to change this item, usually what happens on Adobe InDesign, if I go over here, I can make one change to this item. I know it's hard to see, let me make it bigger. Um, and instead of saying the 2022 Perfect Planner, I can say the 2022 Lisa Seifert Planner. And then I can change this color too, to whatever I feel like. So let's make it something that's easier to read, like a purple. And so now when I go into Adobe InDesign, every single page now says the 2022 Lisa Secret Planner. If I do the, try to do that same thing in Affinity Publisher, first of all, it's just missing from this page. I don't know what that is. Um, you would have to go through each and every single block one by one and change that to the Lisa Seifert planner, and then you'd have to change the color. Uh, there we go. It gets to a purple. So now it's changed, but it's just changed once. I believe you'd have to just select this, copy it, and paste it again over here. So, you know, is it is it going to work? Kind of, sort of? <laughs> I don't know. Let's go ahead and look at a weekly layout. So this is a really easy layout. This is a horizontal layout, so it's not too bad. Uh, and it looks like everything here came through perfectly. And if we go over to Adobe InDesign, everything over here is perfect as well, like you would expect for the weekly. So my answer to you is which one is better? I honestly always think Adobe InDesign is better. First of all, you have master pages. I believe you don't have that over there. Uh, you have text overflow uh, where in theory, this thing, the monthly, all of the dates, you just copy and paste it once, one through 31, and it automatically auto-populates them. Honestly, I can't say it doesn't work in Affinity because I haven't actually used that feature. Um, Oh no, I lie. It looks like it does have uh, the overflow or the uh, threaded text feature. So it will utilize the copy and paste function. 
And what else? I guess uh, things just look a little different. Probably just takes some getting used to to see uh, your pages and affinity. So, you know, aside from master pages, is anything else really different? I don't think so. I think for tools, uh, I like using the, um, what is it, styles. I don't think they have styles in here. Uh, textiles. Okay. We can use textiles. So I stand corrected. I'm sure you're like, Lisa, you don't even know. I don't know. I like, to be honest, I do not know anything about Affinity Publisher. Uh, and the question is, will I create things for Affinity Publisher? No, I will not. I will not be creating double duty. I still believe that InDesign is the far superior product. I... I spoke at Adobe InDesign, Adobe Max this year. I don't know if anyone knows that. Um, did anyone attend Adobe Max? Let's see. I think you can just look me up. Yeah, Adobe Max. This is, oh, this is different. I also was on their channel um, talking about digital planners, but I was also a speaker at their uh, conference this year at the Adobe Max conference. So I am very much team Adobe. Hi think they're a great company. I think they're doing cool things and it has a huge community. But, you know, I understand that other people want to, aren't like hardcore Adobe fans and you might want Affinity. So the thing is, will I use Affinity? Again, the answer is no. Um, but my applications, my InDesign templates can be open inside of Affinity using an IDML file. So let's just try opening up something else. Let's open something with like some more pictures. Uh, how about the social media planner? I know I have so many files. Where is the InDesign? Here we go, InDesign files. Um, all right, so let's try opening up this with Publisher and just checking it to see how it looks. Okay, so inside Affinity, um, it looks a little different. I don't even remember. It's been so long since I made this. Let's see, let's open it with InDesign. All right, so this is what it looks like inside of Adobe InDesign and then over with Publisher. It looks about the same. Probably that text is, again, too large. So if we make it, I don't even know, 72. Nope, that didn't work. Uh, if we make the text 36. Um, I don't know. Why does it say that? There we go. It's still way too big. Okay, so I need to make it 64. Ah, I don't know why that is. I don't know if this is, this is 36 points and over here in Adobe InDesign, how big is this? This is 93. I do not know why they are so vastly different, um, but let's look at another page. So. Here is another page and we'll look at it in Affinity Publisher. It looks fine in Affinity Publisher. So for the most part, I think, you know, for regular files, it probably looks like it's fine. Uh, you just need to maybe go through for text spacing. And it looks like it doesn't, because on some of these boxes, they look perfectly fine. So it looks like it only happens sometimes to certain fonts, not to all the fonts, just a few of the fonts. So, um, so yeah. So hopefully this helped to answer your question. Can I open Lisa's InDesign files in Affinity Publisher? Yes, you can. Will she design specifically for Indi Affinity Publisher? No, she will not. <laughs> um, I really like InDesign, but it looks like honestly, this, I swear this is the first time I have ever opened up Publisher. It looks pretty intuitive. It's not that hard to figure out. Let's move this panel to the right. So the panels kind of look the same. Here's Affinity, here's InDesign. You have your selector tools, both of them. You have a text tool. Uh, looks like this is a table tool. There is no table tool over here. Instead, the table is just at the top. Um, this one looks like it has a table tool as well. And over here, we have boxes. We can put frames in there. We can put shapes. It looks like Affinity just has less items it can do. And honestly, I don't even use half of the stuff inside InDesign. So um, you're probably fine if you're like, I only want to buy Affinity and I'm not going to buy InDesign. Um, then, you know, you could try switching, make the switch, see how it goes. 
And yeah, and actually let me know in the comments below if you like Affinity better than InDesign or you notice that there are some things missing. There are some people that did some more in-depth videos like comparing the two, but I just wanted to do a comparison for my InDesign templates because that's all I care about. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not doing magazine layouts. So hopefully that answered your question. I hope everyone's having a fabulous weekend. And I know this was long-winded, but it was just kind of on the fly. And I wanted to just get it out there in case you were thinking about purchasing something so you had the information right away.